In this video, we're going to discuss using the front side of the E6B flight computer. This is useful when you're doing a nav log, and you need to calculate the amount of minutes it is between waypoints. You're going to have a distance as measured on the chart, and you're going to have a speed as computed from the wind side of your flight computer. So your uncompleted nav log might look something like this. You have your waypoints defined, you have distances between them, and you've computed a ground speed using the wind side of your E6B. Now, the answers to these problems, we're looking for an estimated time en route between waypoints. The answers to these problems can be completed using straight simple math, and this might be useful to check your answers as you're just getting started with the E6B. However, using the E6B will prove to be much faster than computing each problem manually. So just by way of review, to compute this, you would simply take 16.1 nautical miles, and you would divide it by your ground speed, which is 105. This is going to give you an answer in hours. So 16.1 divided by 105 is 0.153, and this is in hours. So it would take you 0.153 hours to travel 16.1 nautical miles, and multiplying that by 60 minutes gives us our amount of time in minutes, which is equal to 9.2. So it's pretty fast using math, but it's faster using the E6B, as I will demonstrate. Now, to compute these problems, the E6B gives you a little bit of information. It gives you a little bit of help. You can read this as such. Set speed, read distance over minutes. Say that to yourself as you read this legend out loud, and it will help you to know how to set up the E6B. Again, that was, think of at the hat is what you set, And then you need to say to yourself, read whatever it is, distance over minutes. So set whatever's under the arrow, and then read whatever it is over whatever the other thing is. So in this case, think of set speed, read distance over minutes. So how are we going to set speed at this arrow? Well, this arrow is represented by this arrow on the wheel. So we're going to set our speed. In this case, it's ground speed, and it's 105. So we're going to take our wheel and rotate the arrow around until it's set at 105. So we've set our speed. Now we read distance over minutes. So we're done turning the wheel, and we just simply need to read on the outer scale distance, and we need to read on the inner scale minutes. Well, which one do we have? At this point, we have a distance. We need minutes. So we're going to look on the outer scale until we get to a distance that's representative of 16.1. So if we look around on our outer scale, we have a 16, and we can represent 0.1 as the distance that is halfway between this first mark and the second mark, because each of these are representing 2. So 16.1 yields a point right about here, and it's going to be 9 point, about 9.2 minutes. And that's our answer. And if you'll notice, that was the answer that we confirmed with math before we started. Now the advantage of doing it with the E6B is that now if our ground speed stays the same, we don't have to reset it. We can simply read another value. So our next distance is 26. So we're simply going to read distance over minutes. So if we look on our E6B for a 26, we don't have one, but we can infer that this is 24, this is 25, so this must be 26 and we simply go straight to reading minutes. So at the bottom here we can see that it's 14.9. So our second time is 14.9. One final one that requires us to reset the wheel. Again, reading our legend. It's set speed, read distance over minutes. Our new speed is 110. So we're going to set the speed at 110. 110 in this case is represented by the 1, 1. The 0 can be implied. All of these can be off or modified by a factor of 10 to suit our needs. So at 110, we're going to read distance. Our distance is 19. So we're going to go over to the 19, and we're going to read distance over minutes. Minutes in this case is 10, a little less than 10 and a half, about 10.4. So 10.4 minutes is our time.